really breaks my heart. Cause we've been lied to, misled for years. Calling out to the ghosts, high on this trail of tears. prophets look for that they wish they could see. So it's no need, to, no need to panic, but it's still a mindset to have to help us get through these things. So let's start with Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Um, we're not into the lesson yet. It's just me talking right now, just encouragement so we all can stay uh, spiritually encouraged. And I'm going somewhere with this. So we have Luke 9, 23. This is the book, book of uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now this is Christ speaking. He's speaking to his disciples. Remember, he, he speaks in parables. He speaks in mysteries. Because it wasn't always meant for the common man to get it. Why? Because we talked about it last week. The common man was written with his own pride, with the wisdom, and he was taught to fear the most high by the precept of men, so he believed in the wisdom of the world more. Okay? So Christ will always speak in the mystery where you gotta think about what he's saying. So I'll read from the top one more time. Verse 23, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Right, take up your cross daily and follow him. Be like a baby, depend on Christ, go ahead. Verse 24, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Right, so, and that's the mindset that we've had in America, in Babylon. I'm pretty sure nobody's concerned about their five year plan that they had laid out right now. I'm pretty sure some of them are, because I was talking with my sister yesterday. I said, because she was talking about, you know, people still out club. And I said, yeah, you know, the world still turns, but it just turns in different directions. Mm -hmm. One direction for this group, one direction for that, that group is a meat cleaver coming down, separating Earth. <laughs> the planet Earth has been separated right now, right? So let's get 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. This is the book of 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the, the love of the Father is not in him. Right, so love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And it's crazy because it's set up in a way where it's so easy to love the world and you don't even know it. It's, it's, it's so many different different little subcultures and sub little niches you can get yourself into, right? But it'll take you off track. And you will end up investing yourself emotionally in this new path of life right now. But you'll be way off track because you can find yourself loving the world. Because guess what? The world comes with an understanding that everything is going to keep ticking. The world comes with an understanding that God doesn't have any type of control over the place that he created. Right? Go ahead. Oh, mind you, speaking of just the, the foolishness of the world and how we stay faithful in the world and the ideas of the world. What's his name? Neil, Neil yeah, DeGrasse Tyson. He was speaking, because you know, he's an authority over science. He was speaking, giving his opinion about the coronavirus and things like that. Then you got, I don't know if anybody noticed, a few weeks ago, they saw so-called pictures from Mars, right? Like, come on now. Then it's another, I don't know if anybody noticed on YouTube, because it's, it's certain, I got to play this, it's called Ideas, right? I don't know. It's the first thing that came to my mind. But it's different things that just come from different areas where I kind of just kind of have a built-in pot of different ideas, right? And it's this group of scientists that's preparing for this asteroid that's coming. I said, what do you think that asteroid is? 
right. <laughs> right? So it's just, you know, the science, they, they know how to just get us invested in their ideas on how the best way the human race needs to live life on planet Earth. Go ahead, Art. Yeah, go ahead. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right, and we usually kind of use this scripture just for the just for the obvious stuff, like clubbing, loving women, loving being with men. You know what I'm saying? Loving money, all this stuff, loving sports. But it's so deep and it's so subtle because there's so many different ways you can love the world and be entrapped in the world. Because why? You could deceive yourself because you want the world to continue. Secretly, people want the world to continue. That's why you got the naysayers and the scoffers. They want their life to continue. They can't accept the fact that their life is going to have to stop. They can't accept that. So they'll lie to themselves. Just like a drug addict. I'm clean. Or I don't need rehab. I got control over this. Right? Go ahead. Huh? Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And that's what Babylon does. It feeds the senses. It feeds the flesh. It's hard to feed the spirit in Babylon. So it's almost we gotta, we, we might need to watch, you know, the Prince of Egypt with our kids. And as ridiculous as the casting was, we might need to watch the, um, just the movie with Christian Bale playing home the strike. Just to program, you know, just to get the, in the thinking mindset of how our people were like, okay, right? that our people was in, in, in the midst of all this chaos, these plagues. Go ahead, Art. Verse 17, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. Right, because you didn't put your trust into something that's destined or that's been prophesied to die anyway. And then I was thinking about it, it's like, when I was sick, I'm telling you, you get so much wisdom when you're sick. <laughs> So you get all type of revelations. You literally either dying or you living. You literally either dying or living. They say you know nothing's on, uh, nothing's just still. Everything is moving. You either dying or you living. How are you dying? Because guess what dies? The flesh. And now I, I was able to understand how you get this filled with life because you feed the spirit. The spirit gives life. Beings can sustain you. But guess what Christ said when he was referring to the law? Man should not live by bread and water alone. Oh, by bread alone. But by every word. So we got to remember those type of scriptures. Um, is that it on that? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, so let's get Matthew chapter 6. And ba basic scriptures, because we're going to, you know, um, basic fundamentals. Phil Jackson, the great coach he was, you know what he had the Bulls do? First day of camp, run up and down the court doing bounce passes to each other. We about to do bounce passes. Two hands, step forward, boom, and follow through, boom. That's what we're doing. Fundamentals, free throws, bend your knees, lift your arm. Point your elbow, keep it tucked, follow through. We doing fundamentals. Come? Come. So let's get uh, Matthew 6 and 19. Book of Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Now, it says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, when moth and rust do it corrupt, and when thieves break through and steal. It was very interesting, because we look at these treasures as the obvious stuff once again. Well, I got money in my bank account. I got silver. I got gold. Uh, whatever. I got a nice career. 
But you know how much time will be wasted when you're off track. That's why I said, that's why I highlighted singleness of heart. You know what I watched last night? Just to see what these guys were talking about. Because what can you possibly talk about right now? <laughs> I turned to Saw Netta. What are you guys talking about right now? <laughs> Jabari had the nerve to get on there and talk about the uh, coronavirus. What can you talk about right now? What can you tell me? Is the Meta Netta going to help me right now? Is African spirituality going to help me right now? Are these candles going to help me right now? Is this seance that whatever young Pharaoh did going to help me right now? Are all those books on my shelf going to help me right now about black history? It might have helped build my character, you know, building ideas and things like that. But at the end of the day, all I need is this. I got what I need, this. And that we gotta, we gotta pray earnestly, Father, give me the heart to serve you. Because we can't will it in our own head. We cannot will it in our own head. Don't deceive ourselves. Go ahead, Art. Right. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Right, because you could have, I'm gonna go back to it though. You could have you could have spent those five, ten years building up your career, trusting in something outside of the most high, thinking that's what's gonna sustain you. But no, it's your treasures in heaven. Because we're gonna read it. Where your treasure is what? Where your heart is. I'm not gonna say any names, but plenty of brothers will do it. I can guarantee you, you coming in, straighten up these chairs, or just straighten up one chair, that will have more of an impact on your spiritual walk than trying to invest in your career or something, especially now. Yeah, men, of course, we want to invest in our careers on a subtle level so we can take care of our families and not be dependent, not be beggars. And then when the time does come like this, we have something established. The kids did see us have a routine of getting up, going somewhere, being focused on the goal. That's what it's really about. Use a career as practicing and training yourself to be focused on the goal, because that could translate somewhere else. That's why sports is so important for young men. The Greeks had that down. All young men was in the sports. And the nations know that. The nations put their kids in football, not because they expect them to be football stars. That's only us. <laughs> they put them in sports because they know it's going to be disciplined. They put them through camps, doing fundamental camps, because it's going to be disciplined. They're not worried about doing a, a step back and a crossover. Look at Jordan's game. Fade away, pull up. That was it. You can look, just look at just different stuff. Look at people's lives who mastered the fundamentals of whatever they did. You can learn a lot from that. You can learn a lot from that. And apply that to the script like, okay, Moses, the prophets, were all just meek, humble, simple men who stuck to just the simple things. Where are all these guys who are doing all these lectures? I want to see, where are you? Where are you? I used to know all the names, Red Pill, Blue Pill, the two twins. What's the other guy's name? Who, who, let's throw them out here now. <laughs> you know, Polite. 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 <laughs> Shaka Atmos, right? The young guy, what's the young guy, man? What's the young guy? Young Pharaoh. Is that the uh, brown skin guy? That used to have the little ponytail? Yeah, young Pharaoh. What can you lecture about now? What can you lecture about right now? I'm gonna say it again, what can you lecture about right now? And they used to, the way they used to attack us, attack us, attack us, and we just say, okay, we're not about to debate this right now. We're not, there's no debate. 
And the brothers who was out there warring with us through the 2015, 2016, 2017, being out there for seven, eight hours after class, know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Art. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasures is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Right, so if your eye be single, remember that singleness of heart, that singleness of purpose, single mind, because why a double-minded man is unstable of all his ways. And guess what? It's even, uh, I think it's a, a Sirach, you might read it today, I'm not sure. But even when a double-minded man comes to pray to the Most High, it's an abomination. And it says, be not a hypocrite in the sight of men, and be double-minded among men. Because that's an abomination. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 23. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Why is that saying it like that? Because guess what? Whatever is exuberating from you, whatever energy you got, is still going to shine. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 24, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God or the Most High and mammon. Right, what's mammon? Money. But it's not just money. It's not just money. It's not just serving some cash in your pocket or your debit card. It's deeper. It's worshiping the philosophy, the ideas about how to get money and the philosophy and ideas about how money is going to be your savior. Go ahead. Verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Right, because I'm going to tell you, uh, I practice a little bit of uh, group black economics, right? I'll shop with the landlord right over here. We got a nice dry cleaning ticket, but you know what? Out of sight, out of mind. I'm not worried about those clothes anymore. Got a, 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 a reset of my priorities. Right? Go ahead. Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, here's something to think about. If what does all these things have in common? The animals, the plant life, nature. They're most of creation and guess what? They're part of the system that's in complete order. They're part of his perfect creation. If we weren't, you know, launching rockets into the atmosphere, breaking the atmosphere, and doing chemtrails, it'll be a nice, perfect system that the Most High created, where everything takes care of the rest. The, uh, what we learned in grade school, the ecosystem, right? Because everything is in perfect order. The luminaries that's supposed to minister unto the earth is in perfect order, so life can flourish here on earth. Remember the garden? Everything was in perfect order. But one thing man forgets, and that's why the scripture is so deep, that we're supposed to be part of that perfect order. The Most High gave the animals instinct. He gave us a brain and our will. So it's up to us to defile that order or become back part of that order and follow what was given us so we can be part of that righteous creation. 
So it's like, if everything was supposed to be getting taken care of in creation, we're part of that same creation. Just do what he says. Go ahead. Uh, verse 30. Wherefore, if the Most High shall clothe the grass of the field, which, the, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye little of faith? Now think about that scripture. We've all seen heat waves when the lawns get scorched. That don't mean you just don't have any grass anymore. It comes back. It's just the natural order, the natural order of things. The natural order of things. Go ahead. Man. Verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Because that's what happened in the wilderness when we started to murmur against Moses. And this is why we should be excited about these times. This is what me and my wife was talking about yesterday. You know why? Because these is, this is our proving time. Because what does Sirach say? Blessed are those who are left behind. Now that's contrary to the doctrine that we learned that came down from the Jesuit order back in the 1500s when uh, Loyola wrote a 500 page commentary on Revelations and created seven doctrine points out of nowhere that had nothing to do with the true doctrine of the Bible. And the left behind part, that, that's part of it. And again, what blown up by what, uh, D uh, what's his name? Darby, Darwin? Darby. 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 Darby, right. So it's actually, we think, we've been programmed to believe the people who are left behind, those were, oh, no, it's misinterpretation of scriptures, not rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what happens when the people of the book aren't teaching the book. So how do you, what, what's the right interpretation? When you're left behind, this is the time when you get proven. What does a coach do? He sits back and see who, 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 who um, withholds the pressure of training camp the best. You're like, okay, that's the guy. I'm gonna make him team captain. You know what? And those guys are gonna make them starters because they could, they could withhold the pressure. They, they on the hop. They don't need water. Matter of fact, they telling the other guys to come on. They encouraging the other guys, picking the other guys up when they falling out. Because they've been tried. I know I can trust him. When we in adversity, I can trust him to be a team captain, to rally the troops at halftime and make it happen. Same thing. Same thing with our father. Like, okay, that soul, that soul, that soul. Job, prime example, that soul. He's tried. So blessed are those who are left behind who go through things. Otherwise, how can he trust you? He can't. If he just give it to you, just like the prodigal son, he had to go through trials and tribulations. The father gave him his, his inheritance, he went out, spent it all up, end up in a swine pit of all animals. He came back home after he humbled himself. That's why David said, it's good that I've been afflicted. So go ahead. Verse 32. For after all these, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Ahiah and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And Babylon taught us to take thought of fit, uh, what, um, how many days is in the year 365? For 50 years, have a 50 year plan. So that's a lot of tomorrow's that Babylon taught us in the program. Make a five year plan, a 10 year plan, and be caught up in that. Uh, I want you to understand a lot of people's life plans have been altered. Zion Williamson, supposed to be the next phenom. Sorry, buddy. We was trying to see what's gonna happen with the Lakers with LeBron. Not now. 
I don't know, was the Bears trying to make something happen in the offseason this year with some trades? Okay. <laughs> the Bears already knew what was coming, so they still <laughs> get it, right? No, <laughs> but let's get back serious. Let's get uh, Ciroc 38. Now this scripture, you know, but being a man, being in the flesh, you know, these scriptures, I always try to rationalize with these. Like, well, you know, I can make these scriptures work for me this way. I can make these scriptures work for me that way. We're about to read it. Real deep message here. So Sirach 38 and I think it's 24. This is the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus out of the Apocrypha, chapter 38, verse 24. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, and he that hath little business shall become wise. Right, so I think we're gonna to start to realize a lot of people struggle with time management. I don't think we're gonna struggle with it anymore, right? I think we're gonna know how to fill up our days now because it comes through that leisure time. Like, okay, I'm, I'm cool watching YouTube, kind of just scrolling. Cause you know, at the end of the day, after, you know, you need, you need that reset and you don't feel like thinking, so you just put on something mindless, you know, some action movie where you don't have to think about the plot, right? Or you, you kind of like in the passive mode, so you just put something on the listen. But no, we, we, gotta, we gotta use our leisure time more wisely now. Or we might use our leisure time. I'm not talking about anybody in Pacific. So if I say something that you do, I'm not talking about you. I don't even know. You know, we might use our leisure time to, you know, get into some hobby that has nothing to do with our personal, you know, with our spiritual growth. Use our leisure time to get up with friends or whatever. Have mindless conversations that go every direction. Now it's time to have use our leisure time correctly. Go ahead, Art. Verse 25. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow, and that glorieth in the goad, that driveth oxen, and is occupied in their labors, and whose talk is of bullocks? And I know in our old, not even old times, but bullocks was a word for, you used that word for um, like, well, yeah, cow, but um, you use that word for like um, something that's silliness. You know, something that's idle, right? Uh, you're talking bullets, you know? I think it came from the English people, I don't know. But Americans used to say it a lot too. But what it's talking about here is like you said, the cattle. Because you got some people who, and this was, if this was a Babylon America teachers, you got to be, you got to find a niche and become an expert in your niche, an expert in your industry. So you got some people who know their industry in and out. But that's all they know. Because they trusted in the world, they trusted in putting up treasures here. So they can tell you everything you need to know about whatever profession they're in. But when it comes down to the wisdom of the Most High, Breaking down the prophecies, being able to see things as clear as day goes over the head. They can't see it. Go ahead, Art. Verse 26. He giveth his mind to make furrows and is diligent to give the kind father. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they that cut in gray seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery and watch to finish a work. Right, this is talking about a craftsman, because anybody who's an artist or a craftsman, you know how that is. You get in the zone, the state of flow, where you know you got some new inspiration and that's all you can think about. But if this is all your life, right? If all you think about is your job, your career, this is what happens. You know, this is, just, this is what takes up your mind space. That's it. And if anybody has worked long hours, or been in some type of situation where in that new, then some new job, and it's a lot to learn to kind of figure out what's going on. You know what I mean? Like that's all you think about. Or you got some test to pass to get some certification. That's all you think about. 
I remember in North Dakota, um, I worked 12 hour shifts, seven days a week back in like 2011. Sugar was on my mind. I, I kid you not, I woke up out of sleep from a dream thinking something went wrong in the plant. I'm like, I'm here too much. Literally, right? Go ahead. Verse 28. The smith also sitting by the anvil, and considering the iron work, the vapor of the fire wasted his flesh, and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace. The noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears, and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work, and watcheth to polish it perfectly. perfectly. Verse 29. So doth the potter sitting at his work, and turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always carefully set at his work, and maketh all his work by number. He fashioneth the clay with his, with, with his arm, and boweth down his strength before his feet. He applied himself to lead it over, and he is diligent to make clean the furnace. All right, I get the get this, get this, because guess what happened when I was getting those fat checks in North Dakota? This is what happened. Go ahead. Verse thirty-one. And all these trust to their hands, and every one is wise in his work. That's where pride comes in, and you don't even need a fat check. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But everybody just trusts in that wisdom, trust in that trade or trust in that career path, trust in that investment that they did for eight years, four years of school, or 20 years at the company. They trust in that over everything else. That's their saving grace. That's the treasure they laid up. And guess what? That treasure has been eaten up by moth, it's been molded over, and it's ran over by canker. How can I say this? Watch the news. Because now it's talking about people might have to work at home. School shut down. Got to finish. Got to finish this semester at home. Watch it on online. What's going to be the reset now? What's the career counselor for somebody who's been in the industry for twenty years, and now they told they, you know, sorry, we can't help you out right now. That's why wisdom, learning how to serve your creator, knowing who your creator is, because he will guide you. You will have a heart for him first, and you'll be back part of the natural order of things. Go ahead. Verse 31. All these trust to their hands, and everyone is wise in his work. Without these cannot a city be inhabited, and they shall not dwell where they will nor go up and down. Right, so it's the, the practical sense of it. Without these people, a city can't be ran. But go ahead. Verse 33. They shall not be sought for in public council. But guess what? When it comes down to important affairs, they'll be nowhere to be seen. They might make sure they'll be called if something goes wrong in the building. You know, the lights go out, got to fix something, or the plumbing goes wrong, got to fix something, or we need security out there, we need a driver here, a doorman there, or we need somebody to hook up the network system here, but we're about to close the door. All right, that's, thank you. Because we're about to sit at this round table and talk about the counsels of the most high to execute righteous judgment on what we're about to do now. That's on the spiritual level, what we even see in the world. Okay, we're about to close the doors because we're about to see what we're, we're, we're about to have this meeting and discuss the future of this company. We, we, you know, we just need you to contract for this job, but you're not part of this decision-making process. Because we have the foresight. You know, we're the ones who labor in wisdom on how to you know, see the bigger picture about things. That's even on the worldly aspect. Go ahead. They shall not be sought in. They should not be sought for in public council. And, and I'm sorry. And to show you the backwardness, who's our spokespeople to be sought in to be sought for public council? Little Wayne. 
Nicki Minaj, the other new girl, Cardi B. She's speaking for us. We ought to be ashamed. We ought to be ashamed. There was a time where tomatoes and vegetables be thrown at her. Well, we, I guess we, we didn't forgot about that, right? We're keeping those now. <laughs> right. Right, we gotta keep the tomatoes. <laughs> right? So I just saw you the kind of backwardness. Athletes, celebrities, actors, singers. Yeah, okay, you might sing well, but what qualifies you to lead the black people? What qualifies you to make decisions that might affect millions of lives? Have you been trained to be responsible enough to know that what you might say on Twitter could cause a storm? Have you been trained in leadership? Have you been trained in politics? Have you been trained in delegation? Have you been trained in the, in the spiritual laws? No, you've been trained to sing. Yeah, you might have been able to come up from the gutter and you know, it was a sad story. That doesn't qualify you to lead people. Newsflash, everybody got a sad story. Right. So that doesn't give you the right to be up in front of people just because you made it somewhere. And now you talked about it in February. Did you get that? <laughs> Black History Month. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh. Verse 33, they shall not be sought for in public council, nor sit high in the congregation. They shall, they shall not sit on the judge's seat, nor understand the sentence of judgment. They cannot declare justice and judgment, and they shall not be found where parables are spoken. Why? Because what's Israel's purpose? To be the righteous judges of the earth. Not to be, what it say? I've seen a, a new thing where servants are riding upon. Um, um, servants riding on horses and princes. Yeah. yeah. So the thing got switched around. The righteous judges of the earth now are the ones who are doing the labor and things like that. The people who was given the instructions on how to run things has been flipped around. Because we're supposed to run the world according to this. Not according to the Bill of Rights, not according to the Constitution. Not according to the, the peace treaties in NATO and things like that. Not according to the peace talks and the G20 summits. It was this. Go ahead. Verse 34. But they will maintain the state of the world, and all their desire is in the work of their craft. Right. And this is why, this is why you get a lot of rich folks who would say, you know, who is it's harsh, but this is why, you know, you got rich folks like Henry Ford, I know they're gone, but Henry Ford, uh, Carnegie, he will say, hey, you know, I'm not about to give people, I'll do more harm giving people money. I need to teach them first. Because they want to stay shoveling coal, shoving coal. They want to stay mastering whatever it is in their little narrow world. Go ahead, Art. Yeah, next, yeah, next chapter. So let's, now we're gonna see the opposite effect. If we did decide to use our leisure time correctly. Go ahead. Chapter 39, starting at verse one. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out of the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Right, occupied in prophecies. Go ahead. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. Right, so where all wisdom is, you'll find this guy. And, you know, and think about, we get, what, man, it's crazy. It's almost like you create, you, you, it's like you commit high treason against the black community if you get found with a book and it's open and it's yours, you own it. We got all type of words. Well, you trying to be white? You, I'm trying to be white because I'm reading. Right. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> yeah, oh, this is an educated brother. Oh, he a coon, huh? <laughs> you know. 
you up in here, right? <laughs> and it's it's a it's a thing in us where we will damage our lives just because we gotta be so-called down mm. to prove we're black. Foolishness. Foolishness. Remember that episode of uh, Fresh Prince? You know, where uh, not not Carlton, but when his friend, I think it was Don Cheadle, and his friend's name was Trey or something like that. Yeah, and Trey was the example of the kid who, you know, trying to be in the you know in the stereotype of what we supposed to be, not reading. Because Will said something, he was like, man, because. Uncle Phil saw it. He was like, hey, this guy's no good. You want a different track. You've been given an opportunity. Same thing right now. We want a different track. We've been given an opportunity, right? And Will was like, but hey, he was he's a good guy. He was always there for me. He, he walked me to school. I had to hide my books in a pizza box. Then Uncle Phil said, while your books was in the pizza box, where was his? <laughs> Same thing. We've been trained not to read. The book is the black man's kryptonite. All because we gotta live up to our blackness. Whatever that is. So while we trying to be black, look what's happening. I, I don't know if you're right. Go ahead. I, I, just, I just had to say something, since you're on that topic. Um, I know a lot of us be on social media. Right, right. <coughs> scriptures and whatnot towards a, a, a particular solution. Mm -hmm. And I was told when I gave scripture towards a particular solution and continued to give scripture, continued to give scripture, and then even brought out other books and whatnot, I was actually told that everything, it, you can't go to a book every time. Mm -hmm. comes up yeah, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and, and it just blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. Because I was coming with scripture. And this was a brother that's a, mm -hmm. a Greek, quote unquote Greek. You know. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, and was basically telling me in regards to I don't believe in you know all that church stuff and mm -hmm. God and all of that and whatnot. But I, well, what I was coming from was history, mm -hmm. historical stuff. You know, from a historical perspective, man. Right. And then related it to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then he had the audacity to tell me when I told him that, well, you know, your Greek fraternity Jews, mm -hmm. God, quote unquote God, right. and that's when the back cover started. But I, I just had to mention yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's a good example. You mentioned it in my books. And, and you made me think of something, too, because what was something else shameful for us fellas growing up? We didn't want to hear this one, especially if it came from a girl. Oh, you a Christian boy, huh? You a good boy, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not good, you know? Think about the programming. Think about the programming. We throw, we throw away, we throw away everything. We might have been on the path, granted might have been Christianity, but we might have been on the path that we brought up as a moral guy, you know, respect his elders. Respect authority, you know, respect the teachers, all that. Smart, pay attention to school, don't try to cause no trouble, no fights, listen to your parents, everything. But no, just because one person said, oh, you a good boy, that all flies out the window. <laughs> and you start studying what the bad boys do. All because of, hey, that's what it means to be black, to not be a bad good boy. <laughs> right, go ahead, Doc. Verse three. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. And what does it sound like? The track record of our people when we was in different places. It sound like Daniel, Nehemiah, Ezra. Nehemiah was appointed the governor by the king. Ezra was appointed to be the high priest, the high scribe by the king. Daniel was his cupbearer. That's an important job, and a counselor. Let's not mention Joseph, <laughs> the examples of examples. Go ahead, read that from the top of the huh? Verse four, he shall serve among great men and appear before princes. And you know, it's a story, it's just a random story in Josephus. I wouldn't even be able to know how to find it, right? 
and it might be Josephus against Apion. But it's this group of men, uh, it's one Hebrew and like, you know, some Greeks or something like that. And Josephus is showing the, the folly of being superstitious the way that the, the Greeks and the Romans were. So they were going down the road, right? And they stopped because of the fork in the road or something like that. And they're studying this bird in the air. They bring out the priest like, okay, based on the direction this bird goes in, that's the way we're gonna go. The Hebrew, you just look okay. So they're studying the bird, guess what happens? All of a sudden, the arrow shoots through the bird. Cause the Hebrew, <laughs> Where we're going to go now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Showing the folly, right? And then guess what? He became a respected man among that group and they started following him. Because we got what, what Elder Carr said a long time ago, common sense. Go ahead, Art. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries for he had tried the good and the evil among men. He will give his heart to resort early to the Most High that made him, and will pray before the Most High, and will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. And what does early mean? Early means before you in some type of circumstance, you making what is called the foxhole prayers. You took the initiative to step to him first before anything happened. Because that's, you, you wanted it. You prayed for that type of heart. You prayed for that wisdom. Right? When you ready? Verse 6. When the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. Right. So you can read all the scriptures you want. Like I said, you can't will it into existence. It's when the most High wills it for you to get some understanding. So that's why we can't deceive ourselves with our own ideas too much. Go ahead, Art. He shall pour out wise sentences and give thanks unto the Most High in his prayer. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge, and in his secrets shall he meditate. He shall show forth that which he hath learned, and shall glory in the law of the covenant of the Most High. Many shall commend his understanding, and so long as the world endureth, it shall not be blotted out. His memorial shall not depart away, and his name shall live from generation to generation. Nations shall show forth his wisdom, and the congregation shall declare his praise. If he die, he shall leave a greater name than a thousand, and if he live, he shall increase it. Right, so, you know, that's just something that these scriptures we just read in Sirach, this little group of 38 and 39, that's just something I always just revisit from time to time. Like, okay, what can I learn from this lesson right here? And just seeing the two sides, the two different personalities. So we're gonna wrap it up. I know we're gonna, you know, we're, we're still gonna have Bible study this week. I know we canceled originally, but you know, since travel plans are canceled, um, we're gonna have Bible study. So we're just gonna do this lesson on Bible study. Um, if it's fun. We'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it, right? <laughs> it might be somebody who had it already, um, something in plan. But uh, let's get Matthew 24. We, we're rounding it out. Matthew 24 and 45. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, starting at verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Right, so it says, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Because if you read the scriptures prior, it's talking about the example of Noah when the flood came and it came out of nowhere. So go ahead. Verse 46, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over his, 
make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Right, so what is it talking about? We all understand what he's talking about the Lord, right? It's a comparison about Christ, but in the physical, real world, like the Lord, like in the old times, um, somebody might have uh, some land, some property, and they had a trusted servant or trusted assistant who will manage all the affairs, and he'll go out, travel, make some more deals, or do whatever he else he needs to do, but he has that trusted assistant making sure everything is, you know, taken care of at home. So read that one verse from the top. Uh, 46. Verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. And we've seen that with Joseph. We've seen that with Joseph twice, with Potiphar. Then when he got out that situation, then with, uh, the, the, with Pharaoh. Go ahead. Right. Verse 48. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. Why? Right, because this servant, remember, he has some level of authority, so he can smite people and cast judgment on them, and raise up accusations against him, raise up conspiracy against him if he has an evil eye toward them. Then if he's, uh, you know, abusing his power, out with the drunkards. Go ahead. Verse 50. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. And just to bring it to modern times, that, remind, that makes me think of like maybe picture like um, you got the CEO, the main guy, then you got, you know, somebody on the level under him. And, you know, he gets a stipend or whatever, and he's just blowing the money on you know, the company tab. He's suspending people, firing people. You know what I'm saying? Not paying attention to the day-to-day -day business affairs that he was given responsibility of. He's so more worried about the power he's getting and the fact that he thinks he's able to do something in the dark because, uh, you know, the CEO, he, I run this, really. He don't pay attention to what's going on. He said he's coming. Hey, he ain't been here. I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna do it my way. Where you are. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we gotta have that mindset with Christ. That's why I brought it out. And also, guess what? We gotta have that mindset with the elders. Right? And it's a chain effect. Boom. All the way to this man, all the way up. Because it's not so much, you know, it's not so much we got to be man pleasers, because the scriptures talk about not being man pleasers, but respecting the chain of command, the order that the most I set up. There's no need to bring, that's one thing we're not going to have, especially in these times. And we're going to stop it. We're going to stop it. We're not going to have any type of suspicion going on about anybody in the search whether it's the man or woman next to you or whether it's the elders. We can't, and we're gonna stop it. Anybody come to you with something? Well, you know, and, and you can't just watch the suspicion go because you're part of it then. Mm. You can't, you know, this brother can't come to me talking about something about Elder Gabar. Yeah, I know I hear what you're saying, but you know, hey, I'm just following the elder, you know? No, that's wicked. That's letting suspicion go. And it, could, it don't have to be about the elders. It's about be, about be anything else. Because guess what's happening next week? Communion. Mm. So settle your affairs. If you got any issues, I meant to say that earlier. If you got any issues with the church, with your brother or sister, settle your affairs. Because communion will be next week among baptized members. That's another thing we'll talk about Passover, about who's able to come and things like that. Because it's three feasts out the year. Passover, first fruits, and um, tabernacles. Baptized members. Baptized members. Come.
Uh, and those who were in the class, because you know you would have been at Passover anywhere, like Pierre and Darius, you know. All right, I went off the path. Uh, <laughs> so last scripture, or a set of scriptures. Sirach 2. And, and these are the type of scriptures just to, you know, review and go over. We read them a million times and broke it down a million different ways, but just read these scriptures and meditate on them because these are the, uh, the fundamentals that will get you through it. These are the fundamentals that will get you through it. This is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, starting at verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. And remember last week we talked about temptation is always the woman who walks past, right, with a tight dress. That's not always temptation. We're in temptation right now. We're tempted to act out of character. We're tempted to be misers and selfish. We're tempted to look the other way. We're tempted to, well, you know, the brothers ain't right there. Let me just go back there and see what's back there. No. I remember, um, tempest and temptations, sort of the same word. So destruction, anything that will kind of cause you to think contrary, and stop your tracks and start thinking, <laughs> right? But that's our problem, we start thinking, like, okay. Not sure if I really know about this calendar now, right? <coughs> Not sure if I really know about this virgin birth right now. Not sure if I really know about this, this name thing right now. Not like we have any problem with people here right now. I'm just saying. Maybe we should listen more to the Pan Africans. You know, they, they, got, they got, you know, I think they got something over there. No, not in these times. Singleness of mind, singleness of heart. Go ahead. On. My son, if thou, sh if thou come to serve. I'm sorry, the, the, the reason why I was saying that is because like I said, we need the whiteboard up, because we need we got the issue over here, the real issue, then you got the complaint. There's a gap because they ain't related at all. The complaint is about the calendar. The complaint is about some doctrine point. The complaint is about the way Elder Gabar said something or Elder Carr responded to somebody calling on blog talk. Like what, what does that have to do with anything? But the issue is over here. It's really the the issue is I'm actually made over on a 95 degree angle. That's not 95. On a 45 degree angle with one foot out the door. But I need something to cover it up. We seen it our <laughs> talking to Kapar. We seen it our. Go ahead. My son. If thou come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And let me tell you, this, this cover up, this cover up, let me tell you. It was people talking about, well, we're not supposed to leave in haste, so I'm gonna try to get a boat. Because a plane, we're not supposed to get on planes. I'm telling you, it's going to come out the woodworks, with, you know, because they, they were never settled and rooted, and they had an issue. Go ahead. Verse 4. What's, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Because I'm being tried, I'm being tested right now. Go ahead. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Because a lot of us might get changed to a low estate now. If you got some office job, some desk job, hey, they might say work from home, and then eventually you don't know what might happen. If you work at some warehouse, factory or something, production might slow down. You don't know what might happen. 
If you're in some type of sales or something like that, people might not want to buy like the way they were buying. You just don't know what might happen. You don't know if you get changed to a lower state, but don't worry. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and on, and on the point of lower state, you know, it could be worse than that. You could lose your job. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that lower state will be the point where you have a body to lean on in that lower state. So that's the importance of what um, Deacon brought out as far as being here, is because if you're not here, we don't know how to help, or we can't know and trust those. If you're not here, we don't get to know you as far as that. If you're not baptized, if you're not part of the church doing the work. So that lower state, be cheerful because you know in that lower state, I've got a family I can lean on in that time when I do hit that lower state. Right. So that's how you can take it cheerfully because you're prepared to know you've got a family that you can have that supports you outside of anything else that may go down in your life too. So that's what entails that as well. Right. Verse, uh, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Right, do we know why gold is put in fire? To purify, because when you get gold in its raw state, you wouldn't even know it's gold. Unless you trained to look at it and trained to know what it looks like, you would pass it up. So you got to get the impurities, the dross is what they call it, burnt out, go ahead. Verse six, believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Right, and uh, what is our dross? Our so-called iniquities, this world, our so-called priorities. <laughs> but guess what, that dross is getting burned off now, and it's okay. And uh, some of it is gonna sting, because we might have wanted, you know, to pursue something, and we might want, hey, you know, just to continue. Go ahead. Verse eight, ye that fear the most high, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the most high, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the most high and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Most High is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, and saveth in time of affliction. Now check this out, verse 12. Woe be to fearful hearts, and faint hands, and the sinner that goeth to ways. Right, now how many times have you told your children to do something, and in your mind you was about to give it to them. You know you, know you was gonna give it to them, but they did some some completely opposite and try to sneak and get it. Like for example, I hate to give Zane, you know, <laughs> but this is just a, a very simple example. She kept begging me to taste my tea last night, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to de deprive her of tea. You know, I'm gonna just save a nice chunk of tea for her, and I just make me my own cup. She just couldn't wait. I heard, I'm talking to my wife. I heard that spoon rattle. I'm like, she's in my tea. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, and I, I told her, like, look, Zane, I was going to leave you with half this cup, and you suck and got one little sip. Now, think about that. What's your one little sip when you were going to get a whole half a cup? What's your one little sip in this life? What's your one little sip in this life when you was going to get a whole half cup? And then more, because your father loves you. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 13. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and wait, and what will ye do when the Most High shall visit you? They that fear the Most High will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Most High will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. Now that's key. They will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. And what's well-pleasing? Obedience and law. Go ahead. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. They that fear the Most High will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. And you become a babe. Go ahead. Saying, we will fall into the hands of the Most High 
and not into the hands of men. Right, we're not gonna fall into the precepts of men. We're not gonna fall into the wisdom of men. We're gonna fall into the most high, into the hands of the most high. Go ahead. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Right, and that's it, folks. Shalom. Shalom.